Okay, so let's start by unboxing all of our supplies in our clay kit. We have a plastic knife, a baggie with clay and a sponge, a little piece of canvas for a placemat, and a paper clip. We are going to be using everything you see here, including the cup that the supplies came in. So the first thing to do is to just fill that cup up with some water. You don't need to fill it all the way to the top. Um, you just need it full enough so you can dip your fingers in it every once in a while. So now that I have my water, I can unbag my clay. So you'll notice that you have a damp sponge in with your clay. That was just to keep the clay from drying out while it was in that bag, since it was sitting there for a little while. If your clay is a little bit like slimy maybe, or if it has like a film of water on it from that sponge, just go ahead and work it around in your hands a little bit. And that'll help to get rid of any water that might be sitting on the surface. So here's my sketch of my alien animal that I'm going to be sculpting. I have a fox head, a goat body, and a fish tail. So let me show you how I would start this. The first thing I'm going to do is just kind of break it apart into a few sections. I've got my head, my body, my legs, and my tail. I just set a chunk of clay aside for the head. And now I'm just kind of guesstimating how much I'll use for the body. And right now I'm not making any detailed sculpture. I'm just guessing about how much clay I'll need for each body part. So I don't start sculpting and then get halfway through and realize I've already used all my clay. So I have sculpted a general shape of the head, a general shape of the body, a couple of legs, and I am gonna use this last bit for my tail. So as you can see, it's definitely not a finished sculpture. I just laid out the kind of idea of my alien animal. And now that I've done that, I can start actually sculpting. So for my head, I just started with a sphere. I rolled it around in my hands till it became circular. And now I'm pinching a sort of snout or a little nose. It's not gonna be perfect right away. It's gonna take some smoothing out and stuff like that to get it how I want it to look. But I'm just going to keep working with the clay, pinching some long triangular ears and smoothing the clay out as I go. So now that I have the shape that I want sculpted, I'm going to use my fingers to kind of rub any wrinkles out or if there's any lumps and bumps, I can kind of smooth them down. If you would like to, you could dip your finger in water and that will help, but be careful not to use too much. Just one dip in water will take you pretty far. If you use too much, the clay could fall apart. So just a little bit of water can kind of help you get things smoothed out. And since this is three dimensional, meaning it can be viewed from all sides, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the back of it looks okay too. In my case, I ended up with a pretty big wrinkle in the back of my head. So I'm just working on smoothing that area down as well. And here's my finished little fox head. I'll add the goat horns later and I'll worry about um, the eyes and nose and small details later as well. And now I want to start with my body. So I noticed I had a lot more clay than I actually needed for my body, so I just broke off a little piece and set it to the side. I kind of like when things have big heads and smaller bodies, so I decided to change the proportions that way. And before I get too detailed in my body, I'm just kind of making sure to check that I like the size of the head in comparison to the body. And I think it looks pretty good, so I'm going to continue working on making my body look a little more like a goat. And a goat shaped body is pretty much just a cylinder. So what I did earlier is I could just kind of rub the clay between my hands as if you were making like a snake, but not so much that it becomes too thin. And now I'm just kind of smoothing out those wrinkles just like I did on the head. So now I'm ready to move on to my legs, but I'm not actually going to attach anything yet. First, I'm just gonna sculpt all my different little pieces and attach them last. So here I am just kind of shaping my legs 
What you don't want is really long, thin legs. Your creature would have a really hard time standing when it's made out of clay in that way. So I'm just making my legs a little shorter and a little stumpier than I think they should be. And to shape my legs, just like I kind of did with the body, I'm rolling the clay between my hands to make it a kind of cylinder form. And if it is too long, you can just break off more. You can see that I'm kind of tapping the edges of it on my canvas. That's just to flatten those edges out a little bit because a lot of the time they'll end up a little bit pointy when you first roll them. So now I'm happy with the shape of my legs, but I'm not going to fully attach them yet. I'm just gonna set them to the side and get to work on shaping my tail. So if you think of the shape of a fish tail or kind of like a mermaid tail, it's like a cone with the base of the cone or the wider part being located at the hips and then the narrow part or the point of the cone being the tip of the tail. So I just made like a rough cone shape that I'm going to end up attaching to my body, but I'm going to change it just a little bit here and there to make sure I like the way it looks. So I got the general shape that I wanted correct. So now I'm going to make the fins by just making a slit with my knife towards the bottom of my tail and then shaping those two sides out into the fins that I like. And just a quick side note, if you don't have time to finish your sculpture today and you need to finish it tomorrow, what you'll do is you'll put those pieces of your sculpture inside of the plastic baggie that your clay came in so they don't dry out. We need to make, make sure that this clay is still malleable or moldable. So we're gonna put the sponge in there, go ahead and seal it up, and that will keep your clay safe so you can keep using it the next time you need to work on it. But I'm gonna continue showing you the next few steps. So if you can remember back to when we've used clay before, we needed to slip and score our pieces together. Just because you stick them on now and they stay for a minute doesn't mean that they will actually stay long term. So you'll grab that paper clip and bend it out. I know you're probably not usually supposed to do this, but this is our scoring tool. You need to take both sides of whatever two things you're attaching. So for me, it's my head and my body and just scratch it up really well. Doesn't have to look nice, you're gonna cover it up. I'm dipping my finger in the water and just adding a little bit to make sure it looks shiny. Not too much to where it becomes muddy though. And I've done that to both sides of my clay. Now I can go ahead and stick them together. Careful not to force it so much that you squish any of your pieces, but just go ahead and press it together firmly. A trick that I like to use sometimes is to use not the sharp side, but the dull side of the knife to kind of smooth down the seam in between the head and the body or whatever two parts you're connecting. And since I already have all my pieces sculpted, it shouldn't take too long to just get them attached. Just make sure you slip and score. So what that means is you scratch up both sides of whatever it is that you're attaching and you add water as well before you stick it on. So now I've got my two little legs attached. I'm not gonna get too caught up in little tiny details, but I'm gonna move on to getting my tail attached. So just like I did with my last two pieces, I'm going to scratch up both sides and then add water to both sides of what I'm attaching and then I can firmly press them together. But to make my creature more stable, I'm gonna go ahead and bend the tail so that more of the tail is pressing the ground and it can stand more easily on its own. Before I put my clay away today, I'm gonna to do one final smoothing out of all of the creases and bumps that I wanna get rid of. And then tomorrow, when I come back to it, I will add some texture. It'll dry out a little bit between today and tomorrow, and that'll actually be helpful as long as it doesn't get too dry. Right now, this clay is very soft, but we want it to be what's called leather hard before we add texture. What that means is it won't be quite as mushy, but we would still be able to add details and work with it a bit. 
So to make sure it doesn't dry out completely, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in my baggie. But mine didn't quite fit in the little sandwich bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab like a grocery bag for me. I have a Walmart bag. So I can just put my sculpture in here and then make sure to put it someplace safe so that maybe if someone's cleaning up your house, they don't mistake it for garbage and accidentally throw it away or anything. Lastly, I'm gonna dump out my water cup and then make sure I put all my tools inside that cup. If you have extra clay, you can go ahead and put it back in your baggie, but just try to keep track of all these things so we can continue to work with our clay. Have fun, everyone.